up in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the essentials of UTM usage in Meta Ads so that you can use to track your ad performance and you'll know by the end of today where you need to go, what you need to do, and some best practices to ensure that your UTMs are in line with the best practices possible. What's going on, Nerd Gang? It's your boy Jerry the Ad Wizard coming back at you with a brand new video. And today we're going to be looking at something that I think is super important. If you're tracking and attributing your ads, okay, you might want to use a UTM in order to do that. What you need to do, where you need to add them, where you need to go to see the results, and some best practice around using UTMs along with my favorite UTM to use for meta ads. I'm going to share that with you so that you can roll it out for yourself and see the results for yourself. Okay, so strap in guys, we're going to get into it today. Grab your coffees and grab your hats. It's time to spin up some ad magic. Okay, ad gang, we are here and I'm going to bring you the definition of what a UTM is because you might be wondering, what is a UTM? Man? Like, What does it mean? What does it do? What can we do? How does it work? Here it says the UTM has five variant parameters. I'm going to show you those momentarily and is used by marketing is to track the effectiveness of online marketing campaigns. I don't know who Urchin is, but uh, apparently uh, they were introduced by Google Analytics predecessor Urchin. Okay, that's why it's a UTM. It's because Urchin tracking modules and are now supported out of the box on Google Analytics. So I'm going to show you exactly where you can see your UTMs as well. So I'm going to show you that, guys. Don't know who Urchin is. It's good to get a good definition of what a UTM is, okay? It's a tracking parameter that we stick at the end of a URL, okay? In order to track the effectiveness of that URL, how people are clicking on it, where people are going, etc. I'm going to show an example, okay, of what a UTM looks like. So I'm just looking at the Marketing AI Institute email. They have a register for a webinar button. Now, as I click on this, you will see that there has been some additional code added to the URL, okay? All of this that we can see here, okay? The normal URL is ends just before the question mark, right? So if I was to take this URL and just paste this on its own, that is the standalone URL, okay? But what we've done here, well, what Marketing AI Institute have done by wanting to track what kind of traffic is coming through their emails, they've added a UTM that will allow them to track what kind of users are coming through. So this is what UTM here is. Question mark, UTM underscore campaign equals webinars, right? So they're tracking and within the UTM, they're tracking webinars. And if I scroll through here as a general webinars, the medium is email. As we can see here, medium equals email. So they've built out this UTM in order to track what people are coming through their email marketing. And uh, we can do the same thing, right? Source, HS email, okay? So I'm going to show you, and here, content, and then they haven't got a label, it's just a number. I'm going to show you a really easy and simple way to organize your UTMs. So actually, you know exactly what ads are bringing that traffic through and are causing people to take action as well. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that on Meta Ads. So now, guys, now we have a good understanding of the definition. We know what a UTM can look like. Now I'm going to show you where you can add a UTM into the Meta Ad Manager, okay? So we're going to go into the Meta Ad account, okay? Here we have the campaigns view. We're going to go in. I'm just going to show you. Click on your campaign. Click on your ad set. Uh, and the UTM is set at the ad level. When I click edit here and then scroll all the way down to the very bottom, we will see here section URL parameters. This is where we add in our UTM. We add in the additional section of code that we want to track. You add it in at the ad level at the Meta Ad Manager. I'm going to share with you my special UTM that I use. Stick around for the end of the video and I will share with you the UTM that I use. But at this point, guys, you know, you might be saying, hey, but Jerry, I still don't understand what it means. What does it do? Where does it go? What does it happen? What happens with this UTM, right? I'm going to show you guys, okay? Well, the main place that we go to see the UTM effectiveness, aka our ad effectiveness, okay, okay, UTM is the tracking for our ad, is Google Analytics, right? It can actually, that UTM can feed into other places if embedded, okay, ask your developer to add in the UTM parameters in other places if you're tracking that. I'm going to show you that in a second. But first, we're going to go to Google Analytics so I can show you where those UTM appear and what the data looks like around those things and where you can go to find those. So it does take a little bit of searching, but I'm going to show you right now. So I've just opened up Google Analytics. I highly recommend installing this if you haven't already for your website. Okay, so again, to go and find the results of these UTMs, you're going to go to reports. Okay, and there's two sections here that I'm going to show you. All right. The first place is traffic acquisition, right? You're going to click on traffic acquisition here on the very left hand side. And then under scroll, you're going to press session campaign. Okay. This is one step of the data, right? Here we can see all of the campaigns and the associated data for each campaign. Okay. How many conversions I had, what's the click through rate, what's the sessions, 
It's a session per user, all those kind of nice things, okay? That's one step where we can see some of this data, okay? Now, the second step, we go to engagement. We go to here on the left-hand side, we go to engagement. We go to events, okay? And now here we can see the, sp the specific content that are working based on our UTMs. So we scroll down here, much like we did in the previous section, and then we press the plus button, okay? And here we're just going to type in the word content, right? GA4 has changed things a little bit up, so it may be that... By the time you look at this video, things may have changed a little bit. Should hopefully be able to find it in similar areas. Okay, here we have I typed in content and we can we can select here user scoped, right? First user manual add content. Okay, so we can click on that. Now, okay, we're gonna see. As the YouTube has been added, we can see the individual ads here, okay, with the individual creatives that we have run, okay, within that UTM, right? Now, the events are obviously the conversions that are happening within your ad account. And we can see which ad has the best effect here. Now, I'm not saying this is one area, okay, guys? I will say this is slightly limited because now Google Analytics has slightly changed and they've grouped this, okay? It's slightly actually harder to identify what is working within your UTMs. I would argue that Universal Analytics, before Google Analytics switched to GA4, was a lot more user-friendly in understanding UTMs, okay? Now we have very limited access to our UTM readability here. Uh, and that's a bit of a shame, I think, you know? So we go to traffic source, right? We've typed in contents and we can go on campaign name, creative format. Okay, so we can see all of these things. There are some avenues that we can see down here. Okay, so campaign name, campaign creative format. Okay, so you can see whether or not it's a a video, an image, creative format, for example, you've got the manual medium, you've got the medium source platform, all those things. Content is the thing that I am most interested in because I want to be able to match, okay, what lead, what patient, what customer has come through, what creative, and that's why UTMs are really, really good, okay? Here, unfortunately, because this is event pegs, it's just basically giving me the events listed with the ad creative, okay? So, and then all the individual data around that. Now, again, guys, this is limited, okay? I think this is really, really rubbish because I want to be able to see what results our one ad has had. We can't see the campaign results here, obviously, in Google Analytics, but the specifics, okay? I want to see the specifics of the ad, and that data does not appear in GA4 from what I can see. I work a lot in Google Analytics and yeah, that is very restrictive currently, right? It's very limited in terms of the view. But if you have the availability to add in your UTMs within your other systems, your CRM system, your booking form, etc., right? I'm going to show you a really cool and really interesting trick that will allow us to see the UTMs, for example, in a place like Calendly. This means that we can see exactly which appointment has been booked and which ad has been clicked on and actioned on in order to book that appointment. So again, this is why UTMs are really strong and powerful because actually we can see the data around this stuff. So if I go to Calendly and I open up one of the appointments, okay, here is a section, UTM parameters. And actually, it means that the UTM has assigned this appointment with the following information, okay? And this is exactly how we label our UTMs so that we can see exactly what drove action within your business. But guys, before we go anywhere else and you're new here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any more important updates. We are here many times a week to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and online advertisers get the best from their paid media, online advertising, and digital marketing strategies. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Right, so here, the campaign name in our ad manager. Okay, if you add specifics in here, how do you see UTM campaign? I put ad set, okay, because I think ad set is really, really important. And you can press UTM campaign equals ad set. And then you can see exactly what ad within your ad set has run best, okay? I've enabled my ad set, the name of the audiences, the name of the daily budget, and the name of the type of ads so that we can see this directly in the UTM. Okay, UTM source is Facebook ads. Again, I'm gonna show you these so they automatically populate depending on the name of uh, the ad set, depending on where they come from, okay? UTM medium, Facebook mobile feed, okay? So we know that they've come through mobile. UTM content, okay? And then, now this is the name of the ad, okay? And then the reason that we describe what the ad looks like with a tag or some kind of label, okay? In this case, image v1 okay so it's long-term growth which is the style of messaging and then the image which is the type of creative okay we can see here that exactly under utm underscore content equals we can see the exact ad name that they use to take action on okay again displaying the power of utms guys okay so and you can bring that up exactly in your calendly 
so that in your Calendly or other places, okay, you can feed in your UTMs so that when you look into your CRM, for example, you're about to speak to a prospect or a patient or a lead, and within your CRM, there is a UTM section which pulls through the UTMs that patient, lead, or customer took to take action, okay, means that you can talk to them about the type of messaging that they or exposed to, okay, you're aware of the type of messaging they're exposed to, so you can talk to them on their level, oh yes, that ad that you clicked on, that had this X, Y, Z, right, and then you can bring that ad journey, you can reinforce that into the conversation, okay, you can remind them, and gives you some idea as to what type of angles and messaging they've already been exposed to before you get on the call, so this is really, really interesting, guys, because this allows us to peg exactly which ad somebody's clicked on in order to make that appointment, okay, so when you speak to that person who's made that appointment, you know what ad they've clicked on, what a messaging they've exposed to, what angles they like, et cetera, et cetera. This is really powerful. One tip that I would say is that in your Meta Ad Manager, okay, don't press publish on your ad until you have finalized the names. The reason for this is because the UTM gets finalized as you press publish for the first time. Okay, so if you publish your campaign and then you change the name, for example, you publish your campaign, which has a UTM already in it, you then change the name the UTM has only saved the first name of that campaign, okay? So if you publish it and then start making changes with the UTM already added in, okay, it's only going to save the first version of that name, okay? So that's something to bear in mind, guys, because sometimes I've seen, for example, I'm going to try and find one here, where it will just say, you know, the name of the ad set and then hyphen copy, okay? Which is obviously, as you duplicate ad sets, campaigns, ads in the Meta Ad Manager, it will say dash copy to tell you that that's the one that you just duplicated, okay? But, and what you'll see is that if you just press publish straight away, that the UTMs that get fed through will have that same. So it's important to finish labeling all of your campaigns, all of your ad sets, and all of your ads to the UTMs that you want before you hit publish for the first time, okay? Because UTMs get saved once you hit publish for the first time, okay? So, bit of best practice there, guys. Okay, guys, and I've found an example here where we didn't do that, okay? The best practice was not utilized. Therefore, and here, as we can see, to my point that I was just saying, hyphen copy, right? So without, we didn't change the name here. This ad, ad set doesn't actually exist anymore because we re renamed it afterwards. Okay, so it's really, really important to make sure that you name all of your campaigns, all your ad sets, all your ads correctly first before pressing publish if the UTM is already in the ad, okay? So if you already set the UTM at that ad level, then it's going to save no matter what you press when you press publish, okay? So here is a great example of that because it says hy hyphen copy, right? So that's us duplicating the ad set, pressing publish, and, and then not changing the name before we press publish. So here's a great example of when it is done incorrectly, what you can expect to see. But here within this example, again, you know, UTM underscore content, it tells us there is the UTC2 video and the video version of that UTC2 is version one. Okay, so we have different iterations of UTC, different types of UTC, and then the video version one is the one that brought this person to make the appointment. Okay, so again, we look at the UTC, we understand the type of messaging hooks, angles, and etc. that have got the person to take action. And we can use that information as we talk to them on the call. Bring this information into your CRM, into your calendar booking systems, utilize UTMs, and then use that information to increase conversion rate when you're jumping then onto the call with the customers or the prospects or the potential leads. Okay, guys, now I'm going to show you exactly what my favorite UTM is for Meta. Like I said, if you put in certain dynamic values, it's going to pull through the different sections of your ad. So within this example, we have UTM underscore source equals Facebook ads. Okay, so we know where that tra tra source of traffic is coming from. UTM underscore medium, and then a dynamic value of placement. Okay, so what placement was the ad in when that person took action? Then we have the campaign, which is actually the ad set name. Okay, so we know the ad set name will tell us the audience, what the daily budget is, and maybe a grouping name of the ads that are in the, within that ad set. I've got under UTM content, I've got ad name. So we know exactly which ad it is, okay? Again, don't forget, it's really, really important to name all your ads so that when you see the data coming through through UTMs, this is all completely attributed, right? Ad name is a dynamic value. Whatever you set in the Meta Ad Manager, that's going to pull through as the UTM content, okay? And ad, ad campaign, we've got the campaign name. So in Google Analytics just now, when I was showing you the ad set, and obviously that was the campaign, if you actually select ad campaign, then you can see the campaign name, which we obviously saw in Google Analytics as well. But... Yeah, that, guys, I'm going to link that down below, okay? Copy and paste this into your 
Meta Ad Manager at the ad level, and then you can also utilize and benefit from UTMs yourself. So really, really cool, guys. Just go down to the comment section or description section, and you will see that UTM for you to use. And you can just copy and paste it straight in. Okay, guys, and the final section that I'm going to show you right Google's UTM creator. If you go to www.ga-dev-tools.google, forward slash campaign URL builder, or you just type in Google UTM builder into Google, you'll find it. Here, we can actually create our own UTMs. Okay, so you got the campaign source. So you enter your URL. You can skip campaign ID. The main ones that we want to concentrate on are the ones with the stars, so you have to fill those in. Okay, campaign source. So that's meta ads, Google ads, campaign name. Okay, in this case is going to be an ad, right? Is it PPC ad? Is it Pmax ad? Is it a Facebook ad? Can specify those campaign name here. So as I've done in here, just gone through and done a demonstration. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it will show you what that URL looks like. Okay, so it's got original URL that we're driving traffic to, and then equals, and then UTM underscore source, and then all of the parameters that are to do with the UTM. Okay, that's all of this. And this has been created for us by the Google UTM builder. Okay, really, really cool. So you can go and create your own UTMs using this very simply. Okay, and you can put in your own values as to each thing that you're wanting to track or look for. And then when you go into Google Analytics or you go into uh, your CRM or other analytics tools, you'll be able to see the UTMs that are being displayed there. Cool. So let me know if you've got any questions, guys. I'd love to hear what kind of UTMs are working well for you. I'd love to hear if you're having any problems seeing UTM data, where you go to see your UTM data. If you've tried using UTMs before and it hasn't worked, if it has worked, what has been your successes? What have been your wins? What have been your learnings? We'd love to hear about it. So hit me down in the comment down below and let me know what you think of UTMs and how you have used them in the past. I love them and I continue to use them and I think there is uh, definitely advantages to using it, also disadvantages to using them, but typically there are additional value to your ads so that you can see the tracking attribution and the results directly for each ad and each ad campaign that you're running. So I think super powerful, guys. Hope that was useful to you. And hopefully you can now use UTMs to the best possible way for your campaigns, for your ads. Okay, so... Leave me a comment down below if you've got any questions and thank you so much. And that's it for today, Ad Gang. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you now have some understanding as to what you need to do to utilize UTMs in Meta Ads, where to go and to get the best practice out of your UTMs. Okay, I'm going to leave in the comment down below the UTM that I use for Meta Ads in order to track my ad attribution, my favorite, my personal favorite. So I'm going to share that with you so that you can use it in your meta ads as well. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe so you never miss any of my important updates. I'm Jerry the Ad Wizard. You can find me at Jerry Ad Wizard on Instagram, at Jerry Griffiths on LinkedIn, and at Jerry Dreadlocks everywhere else. If you want to watch a video exactly how to optimize your meta ad account to harmonize with the ad AI as much as possible, okay? I've got a best practice video shown on your right up here. And if nothing else, you made it this far. Thank you so much for watching. I'm your boy, Jerry the Ad Wizard, and wherever you are in the world, I bid you peace, love, a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.